Welcome to the Wordy Pair Podcast. Your go-to hub for all things writing, world building, and the occasional dive into the weird and wonderful world of fiction. We're breaking down the barriers between you and your next great story. Whether you're a seasoned scribe or just scribbling your first sentences, We've got something for you. We'll be discussing everything from crafting compelling characters to dissecting the good, the bad, and the downright bizarre in the world of fiction. Okay, this script says you guys are eccentric. Isn't that just a three-syllable word for weird? No offense. So, whether you're in need of inspiration, a good laugh, or just a couple of weirdos to keep you company on your writing journey... You're in the right place. Thanks for tuning in to the Wordy Pair Podcast. All right. Hello and welcome, everybody. It is the Wordy Pair Podcast, your moderately funny way to start your uh, weekend. Uh, As always, I'm Rudy. And I'm... A confused Justin. Extremely confused? Yeah, Justin has become confused. Has Did, did it hurt itself in its confusion? I'll always. I mean, I hurt myself in my non-confusion. Yeah, I've done that before. You know, with the, the pinky toe stubbing on the corner of the wall thing. Yeah, yeah, that's... You didn't hurt yourself there. Well, uh, the Your movements and the placement of the universe were not in agreement. That's all that was. That's, I mean, that's another way to put it, but the result is the same. Anyway. Injury. Every time. Anyway. We... Yeah, so we've got a movie. Well, kind of, sort of, right? Sort like, of. We, we said we were going to talk about Alien Romulus for a couple of weeks now, and at the end of the last episode, or what will probably end up being the last, the previous episode, we were like, we're going to talk about Alien Res- Romulus, and then you went and saw it, and it sounds like there's not a whole lot to talk about. There, there's a lot of nothing burger here, depending on whichever way you look at it. Like a, a lot of people were saying that it kind of started out good and then trailed off at the end. Other people were saying that it was actually pretty good. And I kind of felt like it was going to fall somewhere in the middle. Although I got to be honest, there was a part of me that was like, it's probably going to be way worse than everyone says, isn't it? Okay. But I'm, I'm, I'm seeing some progress in my fellow man, and they were they were pretty accurate about how good it was and about how much I was going to enjoy it. Okay, that seems fair. I mean, so... So so the thing is, usually we have a really, really bad movie yeah, that we talk about. That's, that's, that's the most it, fun thing to, to play with. Yeah, that makes it really funny, because usually you don't go to see these movies, and I do. And then right. I tell you about them, and you're just, you're just exasperated by the whole affair. And sometimes, like our... Like our wonderful uh, Godzilla minus one episode, you go and see a very good movie, and then we talk about that, and and that's that's also interesting, less 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 yeah. comical, but but also very uh, you know intellectually uh, fulfilling, right? Right. Today we've got a meh movie, and it might not be worth talking about for very long, so we're gonna I give it a even, shot. I won't even say it's meh, really. Let's, really? Yeah, let's give it a shot. Where where do we want to start here? Seeing as how you haven't seen the movie, what part of the movie would you like to start at? Well, let's talk about uh, character introductions. Were they good? Were there any interesting characters? Were there any characters that seemed to fall flat? Were there any characters that had hilarious backstories that we need to talk about? This is probably the biggest part of the movie that that does fall flat, is the characters. Okay. Okay. So, I I mean, if I'm remembering correctly, it was this podcast that we talked about Alien and Aliens, right? Yes. Yes, I'm. I, I forget things easily. But Look, yeah, so, we, so we have we a bunch, of, we have a bunch of previous content that you can go check out if you want. It's on the Muppy Hindgard channel on YouTube. It's quite funny. Some of it. Some of it is <laughs> it's goofy. On one of the Muppy Hindgard channels. It is the Muppy Hindgard channel, not the Muppy channel, but Muppy Hindgard. So, uh, <laughs> so the character development in this movie is almost nil we had a friend once so my favorite movie is sanjiro we i think we talked about i this just last watched time. it last night actually yeah yeah and and they did remake sanjiro i think back in 2004 okay and one of my friends watched it i tried watching about 20 minutes of it and i was like this is not i i can't do this 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 is not how you pay homage to anything right right 
a friend of ours did watch it, and he said that it wasn't so much that the movie was bad, that it was like it was like a bunch of kids playing Sanjiro. Okay. So so like yeah, like out in the backyard, like, ooh, let's play Sanjiro. I'll be the samurai today. And it's like, well, they were all samurai. And it's like, okay, well, let's not nitpick. I'm Sanjiro, and the rest of you are the other people. The stupid and people. Then they, and then everyone fights for an hour, one person cries and goes home, and they never actually get around to playing it. Yeah. So the movie was probably a lot like that. This movie suffered from a lot of the same problem. I don't know if like I don't know what age a lot of the characters were in these movies in okay. the 70s and 80s, but it seemed like they generally had older actors for this. And in this movie, they kind of wanted to do this orphan thing where all of these kids were stuck on a, a mining colony planet working for Wayland Yutani and they were um their parents died in the coal mines. Like they actually showed a guy carrying a canary into the coal mine, which means that in whatever the heck year it took place in, we still haven't figured out a better way to detect stuff than canaries, I guess. I mean, we have, so, but apparently they didn't... Well, we have d- now, but they didn't bring any of that to this mining colony, apparently. No, but, like, but, my point is that that's... I mean, it's probably... It's probably cheaper long-term to just get a, a mass spectrometer and a leak, leak valve. Yeah, probably, but that would have required whoever was writing the movie to take five seconds to look on Google and see if there is actually an improved way to do this than the old canary in the coal mine bit. Okay, that's fair. I guess the visual kind of gets it across without saying anything, though. That's, so that's I kinda a reasonable wanna, point, yeah. Yeah, I kind of want to give him a pass on that, because that, that was... So that particular scene, the main character is this girl called Rain, and yes, that is her name. She's on a planet that's covered in smog and doesn't see sunlight and has... Pretty much no vegetation, and her rain like her rain, rain like like rain falling from the sky, or rain from yes. like I am your king, or like, like rain, rain like... drops are falling on my head. Okay, because rain is one of those words that has a lot of homonyms, homophones, whatever. Yeah. So she she sees one of the miners, just random mining dude, wandering off into the mines with holding a canary in a box. Okay, and this causes her to pause and reflect, which it's. It's not a bad job of it in that regard, because usually these movies want to hand walk you through this stuff. And maybe the canary image was a bit of a hand walk, that, but but the point they were getting across there was she sees these miners going into a mine uh, carrying a canary. And they had previously mentioned that her parents had died from working in the mines. And so it's obvious by, by canaries. Yes, uh, there were many canaries and they just feather dusted them to death. Uh, the toxic fumes from the toxic plumes. You know how it is. Well, canaries so, do generate an awful lot of bird feces. Yes. Yes, they do. Uh, especially when they're in duress, yeah. trapped in a box. Right. I'm the same way. So <laughs> so in a, in a bit of decent, I'll say, writing without, like showing without telling. Sure. She she gets a look over her face like she's remembering, like like she's thinking about like, oh, that's kind of, this is how my parents died. They died by living their lives in these coal mines. And, and so you don't have to be told that that's what she's thinking about in this scene, which is very rare for modern movies to actually show a character thinking about something and you know what they're actually thinking about based on the context. Yeah, yeah. So so that was... Uh, I mean, so whatever the character's thing- thinking, they usually cut away from those scenes these days. Yeah, or they have some other character show up and explain what that character is thinking in a right. roundabout way by talking about what they would be thinking about. I don't know. They didn't do that. That was kind of cool. Uh, we're about 10 minutes into the movie at this point, and I'm like, okay, so it's actually not too bad. Like, the look of the movie is nice. It okay. was definitely appealing to some of the... It, there was There was a lot of nostalgia bait. Okay. In this movie. Okay. I've heard uh, that. It, I've heard that there's a lot of, a lot of nostalgia bait, a lot of callback stuff, which which can be good if it's done well, but it also can just be, if if it doesn't fit in with the rest of the setting, then it can then it can really pull you out of your immersion. I don't think any of the dis, of the um no, none of the bait in this movie actually like clicked much. It was just like, oh, you're opening the movie the same way the first Alien opened, and the same way the first or, or the second alien movie open so so it started with like a really silent sweep over some spacey looking stuff there okay th- there's a there's a ship that's digging through the wreckage of the nostromo to uh, to find the corpse of the alien which i guess they knew was there and 
what they they, they kind of it, it's an automated ship so they kind of have this scene where everything is silent in, inside the ship just like at the beginning of the first movie are, are they and saying comp- wait but hold on the nostromo Yes, the the ship that exploded in a nuclear catastrophe. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yes, they they decided to go check out the wreckage of that. There, I mean, it's there there isn't it, any wreckage of it. That's, well, there, that's there's the debris. They're in a debris field of the Nostromo in but, space. Yes, yeah, so that shouldn't be there. Um <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I mean, I guess there would well, so here's the thing about a debris field when you have something explode, of... when you have something explode to create the debris, the debris usually has significant velocity v- vectors going outward, and so your yeah. debris field rapidly becomes, hey, there's a screw here, and then half a light year away, there's another screw, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, so that was is... that was the big problem at the beginning of that. That that wasn't the only problem though. There there was like it definitely would have been, it an... would have been better if they had just because we never actually saw the Nostromo explode. We saw an explosion, but we never saw what happened to the Nostromo. It would be, it'd be way better, for instance, if they had like said, "Oh yeah, the reactor explosion, the self destruct for the reactor, you know, uh, didn't work quite right." And what it did was it it, it kind of took half the ship and threw half that ship in some direction, and now there's this half a ship floating out in some direction, and it has alien bits in it, right? That would, that to, to me, that would be, you, you know, you could you could have, you know, the side of it that broke off be all melted and stuff, but like... Yeah, you're not supposed to think about that for, for this part of the movie. You're just okay. supposed to accept that there would be a debris of, of, uh, of... There would be a field of debris that is somehow generating its own uh, gravitational Gravity. pull yeah. to keep itself from flying off into space. I mean, I can. I, I don't know. I can Maybe that was the one. I can calculate the um, because c- they said what the Nostromo was at the start of Alien, right? They're like, I think it was like a hundred million tons of, of ore or something like that. So let's yeah. assume that the ship weighs a hundred and ten. No, let, let's say the ship weighs one hundred and one million tons. I can calculate the escape velocity of a body with the mass of one hundred and one million tons, and it's probably like walking velocity. Y- yeah. Again, you're you're not you're definitely not supposed to be thinking about this if you're a physicist. Okay. You're, you're just you're supposed to watch the movie and be like, okay, they just wanted to show that there were leftover remains of this thing, and it it doesn't work no matter how you look at it. Turn, but, turn but, your brain off and and, yeah, and assume yeah, you the story. Got to turn your brain off for that piece. I, oh god, I wasn't that too sucks. Pleased. Yeah, I wasn't too pleased with that because that's one of the things that is great about the first two Alien movies is that they're they're pretty you know. I don't want to say perfect. I mean, the only the is... only place in the original Alien that I have a, that I have like a uh, questions about are are the the like... the reentry and the taking taking off from the planet. Like those yeah. are a little bit those are handled a little bit too, you know, glibly. I think, but they're not terrible. Like they're they're not they're not they're not breaking existing laws of physics as far as I can tell. Like they're what 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 you see is something that could possibly happen if things were engineered in a certain way. I, I just would claim that. It'd probably be better to engineer things a slightly different way in order to achieve what they're trying to do. But, you know, people do things, people build weird things all the time. So, right? I mean, like, there's nothing in Alien that that makes me as a physicist balk that bad. Uh, You know, there's there's a little bit like, eh, you know, you kind of got to you kind of got to suspend disbelief a little bit here and there. Assume that this ship that was never designed to to um. To, to re-enter into into an atmosphere has a shuttle that has enough fuel to go down and come back up, kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Like like there's a little bit of like mm, question mark there, but it's not bad, bad. And Aliens is such an action movie that like most you can of it, give it a pass on a lot more things. Well, well there's not much to give it a pass on. The the only yeah. they, you know they they, they 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 fly in the ship. They have the cryogenic sleep, which deals with the time dilation and stuff. They have. You know, they they do, you know, entry into the atmosphere and they show that there's, you know, turbulence and, and uh, that it's a rough ride. They they, they have the, the atmosphere processor is this gigantic thing that, you know, is like two acres of, you know, pure uh, machinery that, that has a fusion reactor that does go off. They even have the whole thing about the whole, hey, if you're going to shoot down there, you're going to you're going to rupture the cooling uh, lines and we're going to have a problem. And like that, like 
from like the perspective of of an experimental physicist who d- did a lot of engineering, that's like, ooh, cool. <laughs> Not like this is wrong. <laughs> like, there's almost nothing in Aliens that 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 I find objectionable because some of it is thin and and the rest of it is totally believable. So, well, as a non physicist, I had a really really tough time with the beginning of them going into the Nostromo debris and. It, it and I would have too. Yes. Yeah. So. So it, it, I, I it, did. It's, I, it's like it's like the, uh, the 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 quote unquote wreckage of the Death Star just being on a planet somewhere. Yeah, you thought we were only going to talk about this for five minutes, and it's already fifteen minutes in. So I think we're doing good. Oh yeah, we're doing all right. Yeah. So. <laughs> So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give them a bit of a pass on it. Here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna write the, this part for them. Sure. Because a central point in uh, the events that happen in this new movie is mm-hmm. that they they talk about how the the ships have artificial gravity. So so they they are turning gravity on and off at several points in this movie. That's so true. let's accept that this is a universe where that happens because in well, the first movie they're walking around on their yeah, ships. They, they, they have artificial gravity in the first in the first movie because you don't see. You don't see a large rotating like ring that they're in. The the ship area that they're in does not appear to have that kind of ring shaped geometry, and so it seems yeah. likely that they have artificial gravity. Yes. Yeah. So so let's just say that the artificial gravity, whatever whatever it is that causes the artificial gravity, kept all the debris kind of in check. Let's 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 well, write that I one mean, for. I mean, generally them. speaking, there's like a system, like a mechanical system that makes the anti gravity work, right? Like anti gravity is not a natural. So I'm going to nitpick a little bit here because this is this is a great place I to nitpick. I figured you would, but, but we're like, going to go for it. But like, and an, an anti gravity system is a problem from a physical perspective because unless the energy consumption of the anti gravity system is very very large, you can create a perpetual motion machine with one, right? Um, and 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 physicists are trained to look for perpetual motion machines and say this can't happen. That's that's kind of that's kind of one of the things that we do. And so, like, you know, the assumption is that there has to be some kind of, you know, new technology technology machine that consumes a huge amount of energy, but creates Earth-like or, you know, you know, a little less than Earth-like gravity in a limited area and at, 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 at a significant cost for the reason that there's a lot of good things about having gravity, like, you know, the fact that you don't have dust and liquids flying around endlessly in inside your living space. So, you know, anti-gravity is a pretty common, you know, science fiction trope. But usually the anti-gravity is, requires some kind of technology to be operating. And this can't be the case for a for a ship that has just blown up its reactor. All right, all right. So so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and, and go with your uh, mechanical system theory. Sure. Which I, I think, given the speed that they were able to turn gravity on and off in the new movie, we, we can probably discount that, but... Uh, we can give that a pass. We can yeah, give that a pass. Yeah, we can give that one a pass. So, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't even really need to give any pushback on that. That's, uh... Let's let's just go with that and say that okay, they kind of made a mistake with that, but they really, really, really needed to have a debris field to find an alien in. So, fine, yeah, fair. Fine. There, there's one Whatever. one bad plot point for the movie. They they could have just said we discovered an alien. Uh, well, after the well, events the, of the, the, the I mean the the, the 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 great place to go back to would be the ship that that crashed on LV four two six because you know presumably it's far enough away that it didn't blow up with the thing on that that blew up at the end of aliens and so there's still no, a large well, no. number of eggs there well, or, well no, you're not thinking like a modern hollywood writer though you, I, well, you can't I, do thank that you. because because it <laughs> you're welcome you can't do that because it has to be the alien from the first movie because we're nostalgia baiting like Mad Men. Here. but the alien from the first movie died uh, you know uh, uh ten thousand kilometers from the nostromo that may be I have nothing to follow that up with. Um, okay, great. But anyway, they they somehow found the alien inside of some kind of shell, and in a uh, in in a bit of uh, adding to the alien lore, they yeah. said, "Oh well, the, these are even creatures that can survive in the cold of space without any food or 
I, I don't remember what the other things was. Electrical Food or oxygen or water body. or whatever, yeah. It's just like, yeah, they're, so they're like a perfect organism, so they can just survive anything. I mean, we did see one survive hot lead. And I don't mean bullets. I mean, like, like the third movie, they dunked one in hot lead, and it still needed to be frozen while heated to die. I don't remember. I mean, I'm pretty sure the, that the one that was popping out of Ripley just died in the in the molten lead, but... Oh, that one almost certainly, but the one that they splashed the molten lead onto crawled out and continued chasing after Ridley. Oh, or Ripley. Ripley. Or, yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. I, I don't remember. I haven't seen Alien 3 I, I in probably 15 years. I just watched it recently. Okay. I can okay. promise you that's what happened. Fair enough, fair enough. I, I, I needed to know if it was as bad as I remember, and it's actually a little better than I remember. The first time it was, it, it really kind of turned me off from it because it had that whole, uh, like, it has such a depressing uh, atmosphere. Yeah, well, it was it was like the 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 sort of cyberpunk without the cyber. Yeah, uh, kind of like Highlander two, the the goofball Highlanders that showed up at the get, the beginning of that movie that were right. like on rocket packs. So, but without the rocket packs. No, no, they yeah. Well, yeah, Alien didn't have the rocket packs. They had rockets. Right. We didn't see many of them no. because Alien takes place in a prison planet. Right. So the first part of the movie, they opened up with that whole silent sequence with computers booting up. And then they, the second part of the movie, they showed them cutting open this pod that apparently the alien had sealed itself in to survive in space. Which, which you could make an argument for if you recanonized the, uh, the cutscene from Alien where they were showing the, the bodies of the people turning into the eggs. Like, if, there, if there's some kind of resin thing that the alien can create and go into some kind of you know hibernation or suspended animation, uh, you yeah. you could you could make that case. It, it, you know it it would be it would be it, the 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 problem would be that the alien would not be able to survive reentry on any into any planet that has a significant atmosphere. But other than that, uh, you know you could have the, the alien have some kind of defense mechanism for short term spacewalks so to speak yes and that was the case in this movie okay cool and that was that was where the next big piece of nostalgia bait came in the the cutting open sequence was very reminiscent of the beginning of aliens where they oh. open up that ship and yeah. find ridley in the cryogenic capsule Rip ripley ripley thank you i'm so ridley scott's name was on the executive producer kind uh -huh. of thing i i forgot to pay attention to see if he directed this one or not but yeah I, I guess he's uh he's definitely a little bit more unharmed by having his name on this one than Alien Covenant. Well, that's good. I can say that much. Yeah. So they introduce the main character, and her deal is that her parents died, and she is just she's worked her hours to get a ticket to another planet, and okay. when she tries to cash in on this, they tell her, "Oh no, they actually raised the hours, so you'll have to be here for like another four years," and this kind of puts you in the world building sense of oh they just basically keep these people forever and never let them leave see so, see this is the thing that i we yeah i didn't about like this. it either and i know it, exactly what you're going to say let's let's, because, let's go into because it in the first in the first alien movie they're talking about a contract that they have with the company that 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 entitles them to a share of the profits of the of the run when they get home as long as they you know uh meet certain requirements and like it, we 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 had this. I think we had an episode talking about make where we kind of talked about making things bad. And like Way Wayland Yutani was was money grubbing in Alien, and they were kind of dumb in Aliens in Aliens, and and they were certainly uh, you know uh, trying to get the alien, almost certainly trying to get the alien to to take samples of it in Alien Three, but like. They didn't enslave people like like this wasn't like 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 you know the 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 crew of the Nostromo was not enslaved by Wayland Yutani. Yeah, they they had contracts and the contracts had words in them that they could read that they had signed these contracts and now it's just like yeah you're gonna like 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 the only way that you could that the only way that you could make this work without you know just saying oh yeah Wayland Yutani has slaves. Is to like say, well, you know, they uh, they're working off a of debt or something like that, and even then, you know, I don't know. This is one of those things that that always bugs me. Is that like 
company makes people into slaves. And it's just like, that's not, especially in this series where, where it's clear that they're not doing that in general in the, in the, in the previous iterations of the series. Yeah. This, this alien movie is just corporation bad. Yeah. That's that's the the whole message. And, and like, you know, if you're going to do that as a, as a writer for a movie, you need to make it, you you can make it kind of subtle or, or you, you can kind of, you make it kind of gray or you can have there be bad agents in from the company working, you know, on behalf of their own, or, 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 or the company's profit, like like Burke in, in Aliens is a good example of this, right? Um, he seems pretty harmless, and, and you know, he's he's worried about, you know, money, but, like, at the same time, he, he doesn't seem too bad until you find out what he actually did late in the movie. Like, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. This is just a pet peeve of mine. It happens in so many pieces of media these days that I want to like, and it always makes me like, ugh, this trope again. Like, um, that that game Hard Space Shipbreaker was really great until they added the plot. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> this again. And when you add plot to something and it yeah. makes it worse, right. that should say a lot. It, uh, it does, right? You know, I, I had this issue with... Uh, I, I, I just, I've just seen it over... Oh, there was... um. Like uh, there's there's a there's a there's a little like retro style, almost Chrono Trigger style, uh, game called like something Star Heroine or something like that, and it does the yeah. same thing. Um, and, and it's just like Co- Cosmic Star Heroine. Yeah, Cosmic Star Heroine, and and I I played that game for until until they they revealed quote unquote the surprise quote unquote that the company that they were working for was bad about 20 minutes into the game and then I set the game down and was done with it. You know, that's almost the exact same moment that I stopped playing it because I thought it had a pretty neat battle system. Oh yeah, the battle system was cool and the music was good and the graphics were cool and the plot was so painfully bad that I was like, cool, maybe I'll play this again some other day and then I just never picked it back up again. Once they revealed that part of the story, I was kind of like, this isn't really going to go anywhere, is it? It doesn't. Yeah. so anyway, getting back to Alien. <laughs> yeah, this is a good. Um, this was a good style tangent, though, because we yeah, explained no, no. a well, major problem is... with with current media. It's not. I mean, it's not so much that it's a major problem with current media. I mean that that trope has been around forever. But sure. in Alien, it really kind of, it really kind of like paints the whole company as being this kind of problematic company. Whereas yeah. the other movies it was like, okay, in this one we meet. Wayland himself, and he's not all that great a guy. Well, and we, this we, one... we can forget about Alien Covenant and Alien whatever the other new one was. Like, Prometheus? Like, the, the, yeah, Prometheus. Those are just those are just garbage movies in general. And so, well, not like... according to this movie, because this movie hearkens to them. Oh, that's sad. Only really in like a few small senses, but it's there. Okay. Let's, let's look at some of the characters, though, because I feel like more than okay. anything, even all the yeah. scientific problems that we might encounter... This this is where it kind of falls flat. So sure, we had some pretty clear character building, at the very least character building, and definitely a little bit of character development here or there in the other Alien movies. Now, for right. the most part, those movies, the characters came pre-built. You you kind of had a sense of the character that Ripley was at the beginning of the movie, and it it didn't change too much throughout. Same with well, every other character. Yeah, you, you don't need to, but but like the characters also had like. Interesting but they told personalities. you what they were in different ways. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, the way they interacted told you who they were. Well, there was a lot of there was a lot of character interaction. I would say that I would say that that the character of uh, of what's his name, the the science officer, gets developed in an interesting way in Alien, uh, in an interesting and unexpected way in Alien. You, you know, like th- there is some character development in Alien, but it's basically a slasher movie, so there doesn't need to be a lot of character development. But they have to at least interact with each other in interesting ways. And they do. Like, you can tell that there's a lot of different dynamics between the characters in the alien crew that gives your mind a lot of things to play around with and chew on while you're watching the movie. Yeah, this movie was more like, well, this is the part of the movie where someone would probably try to do something like this, so let's have one of the characters do this. Oh. Huh. Yeah, it, it, was, it was a little bit different of an experience. So let, let's take the main character, her her story arc. She starts off as someone trying to leave the planet. She she wants to get to this other planet where she'll have sunlight and trees and more canaries and cakes and yeah, confectionaries, whatever. 
she has a quote unquote brother who is actually just an android that uh was scra- it was he was scrap from Wayland Utani and her dad took him and repaired him and gave him a new prime directive which was to always look out for rain as part of his programming uh uh-huh. he was he was built to have a lot of dad jokes okay so he makes he makes a lot of puns essentially and and they actually i think they actually referenced this like i i barely caught it sitting in the theater listening but they did say something about his him having dad jokes uh that were programmed by her dad so I, i'm okay with that yeah they, it was it was actually one of the better parts of the movie in some places okay uh, like at the end of the movie you thought the the main characters were going to die and so she's like hey tell me some more of your jokes <laughs> okay that that seems totally that's a totally human response yeah yeah so so Rain's progress through the story is that she finds out she can't leave the planet. Her friends are like, "Hey, when we were on one of our uh w- one of our uh jobs, we got a ping from something in the upper atmosphere." Which this is another one of them scientific problems. It's like, "Okay, so you were the only ones that were anywhere near this area with a ship that's going to be detecting things that might be floating above this uh colony." Yeah, And yes, they were. Like, Wayland yutani didn't detect it, despite the fact that it was their own station that was slowly falling into orbit. The colony they're on is on something that has rings around it, like Saturn. Okay. So this thing is steadily falling into the rings, and once it hits them, it's going to be torn to shreds. So they've supposedly got this 36-hour window to get up there, and they're going to steal five cryogenic chambers from this station, put it on their cargo ship, and they're going to use that to fly to this planet that they all want to escape to. Yeah, okay. So she isn't really completely sold on doing this, but she doesn't see any other way to escape the colony planet. She sees a canary in a box. This gives her a heartfelt, sentimental moment where she says, okay, let's do this. Okay, I'm, I'm down with that. That sounds reasonable. And for the rest of the movie, she's kind of just... They didn't really make her a character that was like, I always know what to do in a situation, or I'm the only one with a cool head. Yeah. So so that was good. But they still didn't do much with her. Like, she was basically just there to fill in the hero role at the appropriate moments. And it didn't even feel too, like, heroic. I mean, at the end of the movie, kind of like the underlying... Her underlying theme, essentially, was that when they got to this planet... The planet was largely free of Wayland yutani stuff, and yeah. especially androids. So her brother wasn't going to be allowed to come with her. And th- this is where they did a lot of weird stuff with the android. But, but, but that... the... I mean... Aren't the... This is another... They mention... Company names, or or I guess like brand names for... I don't know. Like, this is one of those things where I, I, like, I think that if you look at the scripts for Alien and, for, for Aliens in particular, that, like, it's, it's, a, that, that it's, it's assumed that the androids are not generally produced by Wayland yutani Probably not, no, but in this particular movie, they're pretty clear about it. It's like, yeah, okay. this is Wayland yutanis stuff, and essentially they're going to a planet where they're like, yeah, we don't want all this artificial crap here, no androids. And and so when they arrive, it's a known quantity that they won't be able to take this, this android whose name is Andy. Of, of course it is. Oh, that's fine. That that's totally I'm fine with that. I'm just like, it's a little uncreative, but yeah. Yeah. Given the, given the names of other androids in the alien series, I probably would have tried to come up with something a little more alien ish, but Andy works. Sure. That, that was this is kind of what I mean though when I say the movie felt like kids playing alien rather than yeah, yeah, yeah. it being an alien movie. So they make a mention of him not being able to go on to this planet at some point and he's an android so you know he's not supposed to care about these things and yeah. he I mean it, he doesn't really show that he does care. He's kind of like, "Oh, well my directive is to do what's best for Rain, so you know, whatever." Yeah. They they almost hint at him have almost almost having some hint of emotion about not being able to go with her but yeah they don't really they don't really play into it much but then they kind of do later on when he gets an upgrade from a a disabled tech officer android on the ship that they're getting the capsules from okay and the upgrade changes his prime directive to 
do whatever is good for the company. So, so, so this is oh. what we're going with here. Like, like apparently Ash's prime directive was to do whatever was good for the company. Uh, same with the tech Android that they find in this movie. It's like, yes, we do whatever is good for the company. We are the androids. That makes some sense. I mean, that's, it, that's it, it what does. Ash I mean, did. Yeah. But, but, it, but I mean, like the, the implication is that he was getting orders, right? Like, yeah, the, like the implication, the thing about alien is that, is that, they don't show you a lot of people using the mother computer, right? But like the the assumption, b- because Ash has access to that room, uh, is, is that he's going in there regularly to get directives from the computer, and the computer mother is you know directed to 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 expend the crew for the purposes of a of a good bio weapon, and therefore since he's you know be taking these orders from mother that he's that he's also getting you know that he's also getting this kind of thing going on. And then, and then in Aliens, they further expand it by saying that yeah, he has a directive not to harm people directly, especially, or or to or you know by uh, by, by his actions to allow people to be harmed, but but the earlier models could be given conflicting directives, which would cause them to freak out, like Ash did. So, I mean, like like I'm not I'm not against them saying that the that the tech robot had the directive of do what's best for the company. That seems like something that you could you could gather from Alien and Aliens, especially. Does this movie happen like right? This movie must happen like pretty soon after the first Alien movie, yes, or or is it way later? I don't think it was way later. I think it was pretty soon after because of just because of the fact that they see. See, there's another problem with that. Yeah, there's a big problem with that because when when Ripley arrived. 57 years later yeah exactly to that one station <laughs> they didn't know what happened to the Nostromo so like the way that you would do this if you wanted to write this is you would have there be a different company running this planet that hates Wayland Yutani finds the Nostromo and ends up because they're ignorant of the whole situation you know creating this whole alien mess that would be the way that you do that and and that would also help with the the anti corporate message, because it would say, yeah, the corporations kind of suck, but they but they compete with each other, which makes them suck less, right? This is this is something that you could easily do to make this story more interesting and more believable, but instead they they decided to retcon the fact that the Nostromo was lost. If you were a fool like you, that is what you would do, yes. But you you are not a Hollywood producer or director or, or anyone, you're not a Hollywood person. And so what you don't realize is that the real thing you do is produce nostalgia bait, which is what the, the name Wayland yutani stands for. That is nostalgia bait. And so you put that in your movie. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay, debunking you your whole argument right there. <laughs> that sounds, yeah, that's a perfect debunk. I, I can't, I have no I have no counter to that. We call that a callback, sir, and the world is steadily hanging up more and more on those, but even so you you have uh you have these androids that have just this base prime directive of what's good for the company. Yeah. They are also supposed to have that that sort of built in we we don't harm humans. And they actually the mention it. The Asimov yeah, directives. Yeah, the three yeah. directives. Uh, they they mention it in the movie, and they actually talk about things that happened with robots that were questionable about this. Like someone mentions that uh, one of them trapped a bunch of miners inside a cave, mm-hmm. and the person that was telling the story was like, "Yeah, because there there were three people that got trapped, but it saved twelve people, and so uh, that that's how the the androids work. It's like, well, these people would have died too if I hadn't." shut if i hadn't trapped these other three people right so apparently they can allow people to come to harm through their inaction if they're saving more people i guess well, they, um, uh, they have to they have to they have to i mean you you know yes this does create some some questionable yeah. situations but at the same time if if the if the robot if the android was seen as taking the the best possible action saving the most possible people then you wouldn't really be able to complain too much about it right right yeah okay so then they just ignore all of that, and Ash gets an upgrade. Not Ash. Um, Andy gets an upgrade, <laughs> and he goes from being like, so he can't talk properly at the beginning of the movie, and and you're kind of like, 
is, is this her autistic brother or something? And okay. it's very quickly revealed that, no, he's just an android that has some bad uh, parts or something. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So when he gets the upgrade from the tech officer, suddenly he's a a very... Talkative? Not not talkative. Like, he's he's very coherent. Oh, okay. And he... His expressions kind of change as well, but like in a way that makes it clear that, I, okay, let me put it like this: the guy that was playing him, yeah, was a was a really good actor in these parts. Like, like okay. I could see him being a co-star or lead in a movie. Okay, uh, cool. He's able to take eloquent speech and uh, say it clearly in ways that would make a good lead character. He he kind of, because he could he becomes a tech uh, a science tech. Yeah. After getting the upgrade, like it becomes clear that he's calculating everything out and figuring out exactly what he needs to do to accomplish whatever mission it is that he has at the time. Yeah. Now, there is this weird thing that happens with him where he says something about some people have to be left behind. And it's not so clear that he's making a dig at Rain, but Rain kind of seems to take that as, oh, well, I was going to leave him behind to go to this planet I wanted to go to. Yeah, I wonder if now, he's angry he's... about that. But he okay. can't be because he's an android. He doesn't get angry about those things. Yeah. And, and this is further clarified at the end of the movie when they remove the upgrade and he goes back to being, I I, I don't know, like Weird Andy. Um, okay, okay. Weird Andy who can't talk right. And he's more sort of like, oh, I'm I'm sorry for all those things I did. I couldn't help it. But now I'm just going to protect you again. So, so he's he's not really angry about this, but you know the movie ends with this scene where Rain and one other girl are about to escape. They're taking an elevator up to a ship that will get them off of this station. Yeah, and she tells the other girl, "You know what? You go on ahead," because she's decided that she's not going to leave Andy behind, even though he's just an android. Yeah, yeah. So, so she climbs back down this elevator shaft and goes and rescue rescues him and removes the uh the tech officer upgrade can i ask a question yes yes you can so her father her father who passed away made this this android to be her companion and protector yes and then she decides that she want then she later on she decides that she wants to go to a planet where androids aren't allowed I guess it was the only planet she knew of where she could see trees and sunlight. And then she also, while having made the decision to go to a planet where androids aren't allowed, then decides that she can't leave the android whose purpose was to protect and and foster her. Is that... That, this that is feels correct. incoherent to me. Yeah, well, it's... Is, is, that, is that ever addressed in any way to kind of... Square that circle? I was hoping you would ask this, because we, we need one of these moments. Um, okay. It's worse than that. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Tell we me haven't more. had a worse than that in a while. Let's, let's, let's go with It has been a this. bit, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the movie kind of, as it, as it draws to a close, she says, we'll take you to that planet and we'll figure something out. I'm not right. going to leave you behind. That would be the reaction I would expect a human being to have. Yeah. Um... But he's just an android, and she knows that she can't do that, and he's supposed to protect her. And so she changes his prime directive to do what's best for us, not for me. Which, I guess is okay, but what does an android think is best for an android? I mean, probably continued continued operation. Yeah, so the implication would be that he's supposed to protect her, because, but, but like the implication is that he wants to protect her, but he's an android. His, he doesn't have necessarily these wants or anything right they, they never really like like they play it up like andy is way more human than he is android throughout the whole movie okay even though there's this part whole section like a large chunk of the movie he is possessed by this upgrade that is causing him to do things that are against rain's interest and are possibly putting her in danger yeah he never outright lets her end up in a situation where she'll she'll die for sure but he can't really help if his mission will cause that. He has to go along with his new prime directive. Yeah. So when he changes back and she says, yeah, we're going to take you to this planet. Now, they establish that she will be arrested and possibly sent away from the planet if it's discovered that she brought an android to this planet. Okay. 
which is not in her interest. So even if she says what's best for us, his directive would still be, okay, I can't go with you to this planet then. Right. Because it doesn't affect him in any way if he's there, but it does affect her, and he knows this. Well, I would say let me let me try to let me try to steel man this a little bit. Okay. If he if he leaves her, he's no longer able to protect her, and therefore she will come to more danger than if he is still if he tries to stay. Yeah, and you could possibly go with he as an android understands that he's like uh what's the word for her? he he's her comfort animal. Right. So Perhaps it is in her interest to have him stay with him, even under dangerous circumstances. And, you know, until like the that. last possible moment, kind of thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so, I, I mean, we don't have to nitpick that part too much. It was kind of just like this... Well, like, uh, do they explain why androids just aren't allowed blanket and, and, like, on this planet? I think they did. The movie wasn't particularly interesting in its lore in that sense, so I might okay. have missed exactly what they said. It is something about... Because it was a green planet, and it, there was, they were just, like, not covered in filthy Wayland yutani tech everywhere. Yeah, but... okay. I, I don't know. I think that might have had something to do with it. I, I think we could just assume that for but now. Like the, the, the reason to not want filthy Wayland yutani equipment on your planet is because Wayland yutani equipment has weird directives, like, do what's best for Wayland yutani right? And, yeah. and if, you know, re, re, realistically, there'd be, like, someone who'd be like, well, what's your prime directive? Well, my prime directive is to protect her and protect myself. And they'd be like, oh, cool, you're in. Right? Like, I, I don't know. I, I guess we're nitpicking a little bit here, but but it is it is a strange thing to, like, give up on. Because, like, assuming that there are multiple companies that make these androids, it would make sense to deal with it on a case-by-case basis because, you know, a a, 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 a human intelligence thing that that is designed to protect people at the cost of its own existence is a really useful thing to have around if you can. And I so, would agree with you. Yeah. It just seems, it just seems very arbitrary, I guess is my, is, is my, is my question. I'm, I'm really not sure. So I don't want to, I don't want to like pin this on the movie, but no, I that's think, fair. That's I think fair. that they were trying to make a case that the planet was a, a very like nature first kind of community. It's a nudist colony. It's a nudist colony. Yeah, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Andy's gonna be... There's gonna be a dead giveaway when Andy shows up and his lower half is just metallic parts. Yeah. There's... There's really not much more to Rain's character development throughout that. She has this whole thing with the robot where it's like, I'm gonna leave him behind. No, I'm not gonna leave him behind. We'll figure something out. That's all the real character development. The rest of it is just her going from from like plot progression to plot progression like oh i watched this person die oh we have to get past this thing and nothing in anything that happens really tells you anything more about her other than she's an orphan whose parents died that's like, okay. like you watch her do all of this stuff and it's just like yeah sure ripley would have done this stuff if she was in this movie but we know ripley's character more than i'm an orphan do like, we we don't even know that ripley has a kid until the second movie no, but we we know by the way she interacted with everyone who she is. We don't know. We really don't know what kind of person Rain is, other than like she. Is, she... is this because she doesn't interact with other characters, or is this because her interactions with other characters do not shed light on this question? It's exactly that. It do, it doesn't shed light on it because the other characters are uh, are thin as uh, I some kind of I don't know tissue thin paper noodle. Yeah, tissue okay. paper. We'll go with that. There, there's a character who's kind of like <laughs> they're as thin as Wayland Yutani Wayland Yutani brand toilet paper. Yes, uh, and there, there's a lot of jokes about that on the colony, so we can run with that one. There we go. So, so there's one character I can't remember any, and I mean any of the other characters' names because they were all just like, I don't know, Sarah and John, and and one of them is like I think that one is her brother because she mentioned having a brother and it's one of these for sure, so it's probably this one. Okay. Yeah, so Andy and Rain are the only ones I really remember. Uh, there's a girl who's pregnant and she doesn't want uh, Rain to tell anyone, which is just really blatant setup for like, oh, 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 something's going to happen with this baby and it's going to be an alien. Like right, oh. right from the beginning when you find out, it's like, yep, that's uh, that's that's a thing. That's going to happen. I guess so. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, so they're on this ship, and and they find out that the gravity is kind of turning on and off on this ship uh, constantly. And so they just turn the gravity on, because Andy can just interact with... As they put it, Andy can inter- interact with Mother, because he's Wayland yutani Tech. Okay, Which, okay. to me, again, you brought up Ash talking to Mother in the first movie. Right. Uh, to me, it seems like Mother would be able to give even, even Andy uh, new directives... Well, like, what did her father do to Andy that caused him to not take directives as a Wayland yutani product? But then also, he does take directives when they give him a little microchip thing. Yeah, I, don't I mean, know. It, you know, the, the assumption would be that the microchip itself is the part that, that takes and translates the, the directives into action or something. Yeah, and since he was malfunctioning tech, maybe we could just say, okay, so mother couldn't do anything with that. It's just like, yeah, you don't work. We, I won't yeah, bother. Yeah, you know, like he, can, he, can, he can still tap into the... Yeah, I mean the thing about the thing about Alien is that there's not really any wireless communication between the android and mother. Like, he's clearly going in and sitting down at the chair and typing in things. That that's clear, you know, that's made clear from the plot because well, he has access to that room and he wouldn't need it otherwise. Or I, I, I mean, part of it might be the fact that they're trying to he's trying to pretend that he's human, but at the same time, you know, it it doesn't seem like he's getting wireless communications from mother, and so like. Uh, you know, this is one of those things that just didn't, just wasn't part of, uh, of the, of, of, of the alien universe until later. Uh, and so like, they kind of have to, they, they kind of figure out how to deal with it because probably, I would imagine that most of the people who are working on this movie are so young that with the exception of Ridley Scott, that they don't even remember when it, when there wasn't easy, free wireless communication over you know, medium distances for free at all times. It, it could be something like that, but he kind of has to stick his finger into these weird uh, little holes. Oh, that... oh, that's even better. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, so he gets a direct connection. to. Supposedly, he's getting a direct connection to the version of Mother that is on this ship, which sure. M- Mother never actually appears anywhere on the ship that, like, in any form that you can translate as, oh, this is a computer on the ship that's giving uh, androids or whatever their orders. Sure. But but he is interacting with electronic parts of the ship. And at one point, he's not able to open some doors because it requires a science tech officer, which is why they steal a mm. chip mm-hmm. from the science tech officer, who actually comes back to life and looks like Ash. And he's like, he, he's kind of severed in half. And he tells them about the alien that uh, that they found from the Nostromo and how it pretty much took out everyone on the ship and they also for some reason they also have a bunch of the face huggers they didn't really explain where they got them from well the the face huggers are weird because they come out of the eggs but based on aliens the eggs are only laid by the queen but based on alien the the uh the cut scene uh that is the deleted scene the eggs come from victims so i don't know it's one of those things that it's probably better left a little bit nebulous. Yeah, well, I mean, we have to because they just have them. And I mean, like, yeah. hundreds of them on this ship. Hundred, for... Hundreds of them. Yeah, they have many of them. So they've, they've just been gobbling these things up, and uh, they, they all escape. Because they they were keeping them frozen mm-hmm. to contain them. They had them in sure. boxes frozen. Now, the only real security part of this was the frozen part, not the box part. Because as soon as they started to thaw and awakened, they were able to rip out of these boxes and start chasing all of our quote-unquote heroes. Okay. And so, naturally, one person gets in, gets a facehugger and gets infected. Yeah. Uh, the progression of the alien growing inside her is much faster than what happened in Alien. And I mean, like, a matter of, like, not even hours. It was, it might have been less than an hour overall time. Okay, interesting. It's just like, bam, facehugger. Okay, Bam, well, alien. We're gonna we're gonna freeze it, and now it's gone. Okay, so she wakes up like a minute later, and then they try to escape to a ship. Now this is the part where Andy goes a bit rogue. He's like, "I need to kill her to protect everyone else." The the yeah. the science officer convinces him that she's got the alien inside of her. So if you if you go on that ship and try to escape with her, everyone else will die. So he uh, actually okay. runs after two of them. He's going to kill okay. the one, and and the two yeah. escape onto the ship and lock him out. Yeah. And they detach the ship while the others are still left on this station that's falling into these rings. Okay. Now, the one guy's character that that decided to detach the ship, he, he was kind of a dick from the get-go. 
uh, his the reason for him being such is that he was basically making fun of Andy all the time and kind of abusing the android. Okay. Okay. He, and his backstory is spoon fed to us by another character who says, "Yeah, his parents were uh, one of the people that that died because an android." Came, like closed off a mind to them to save the other people, so he doesn't like androids. Yeah, that is the extent of his character. So he's just abusive towards the android that is getting them the equipment that they need to escape the entire time. Like, like he oh. even threatens to destroy it with a weapon, kind of jokingly, but he's like, "I could destroy you right now." And uh, and then anytime Andy slips up anywhere, he's ready to break Andy in half. It's so like, "No, you can't do that. He's the only one that can open doors on this thing, you idiot." Now, keep in mind, okay. these kids are all technically, like, mine workers or some kind of workers on the planet. Like, they, I don't think any of them really worked the mines because uh, Rain was told when she tried to cash in her hours that she was going to have to work another four years in the mines before she could leave. So apparently she wasn't working in the mines before that. But I guess because of the work they do on this colony, we're just going to have to give them a pass on the fact that all of these kids... And I don't... I, they looked like teenagers. I couldn't tell if the actors just looked young and were actually in their 20s, but but they looked like teenagers, and they acted like teenagers, and they were talking about being orphans. I'm pretty sure they were supposed to be teenagers. And I'm okay with... Well, like, I mean, first off, if they say you need to work four more years in the mines, that could imply that you were already working in the mines before. No, no, no. It was, it was said in a way that was like, oh, we're going to move you to the mines. Oh, and, you know, okay, she knows her enough. parents died in the mine, so she doesn't want to do that. Right. And, but these kids know how to use all this equipment. Like, like the one that gets infected with the alien can fly the ship, which yeah. I I don't think they made a mistake here. Because they, mm -hmm. they didn't really say if anyone else was capable of flying the ship. And at the end of the movie, when they escaped, they did have... I, I think they had Andy piloting it. Okay. So I, I think that, that that might be okay, as far as sure. things go. But there yeah, was a acceptable. lot of equipment that... Sometimes they knew how to use things, and sometimes they didn't. Okay. Like, they, they knew how to use a, a gun that could release the cryogenic material when they needed to freeze the face huggers, Because that's how they removed uh, one of them. They, they froze its tail so it would let go of one of the girls, and they, oh, they were okay. able to pull it off of her. But, but they, they just found this contraption that was like, okay, we'll hook a canister up to this, and it's, it's just like a backpack sprayer yeah. that freezes things. It's the thing from Deep Rock. Yeah, Deep, yeah, Deep Rock Galactic. That's they. It was for Rock and Stone, only more like yeah. for Acid Blood. For Wayland and Yutani. Yeah. <laughs> there was one kid who knew how to use a bunch of the military equipment, and they actually, the movie questions him on this. Like, Rain says, how do you know how to use all of this? Because it's clear that they're all either too young or not military, and, and so right, they, right. they shouldn't, he shouldn't know how to use this. And he explains it away by saying, oh, uh, movies and video games. And it's like, okay, so we're going uh, with that. I, I don't think video games have ever really shown me how to use any weapon whatsoever. I mean, no, <laughs> they, they don't. Like, like, video games are not really firearm training. If there was a firearm training simulator, I might be able to give him, give him that. There, but... there, are some, there are some games that try to make it as realistic as possible, like having you, you know, eject the magazine with a button and then... You know, put in a new magazine, or, or you know, there, there, there are games that do this, but they're not generally popular. They're, yeah. they're niche games that most people don't play. Yeah, so I, I had a bit of a hang up, not too big of a one, but I had a bit of a hang up with the way that they were I mean, all more familiar it, with equipment than it seemed like they should be. It's, while it's, at the it's same strange time, strange because like, like most military stuff, the, the, the most military, with, with the exception of things like, like fighter jets. Most military equipment, like, is designed to be used by a, you know, an 18-year-old person that just got out of high school with no, with almost no training. Yeah. You know, and, and like, you're going to have problems with extended use. Like, they're not going to know how to clean it or maintain it. But, like, a lot of military hardware has, like, you know, instructions on it for the most part. You know, in some, in some sense. So, so that people don't, like just like pull the wrong lever or push the wrong button by mistake. Like most of this, most of this equipment is designed. Like you could just say, no, it's, it's pretty, 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 it's pretty straightforward. It's like, it's like this other thing that I've also used in my life. And that's true of a lot of, a lot of, 
of the less specialized military hardware even today. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's really it's a small hang up that I have. Like, like their computers run on Windows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 no, it's, it's just a hang up that I have that they when they needed to know how to use something, so there there was you know they they knew how to use it, but then there's like one girl who doesn't know how to open doors. Yeah. It's like this is Wayland Yutani's stuff, and, and and like everyone else knew how to open the door, and the one girl that's being chased by an alien didn't know how to open the doors. They're like, no, no, there should be a key there. Find the key, put the key in, press the button, open the door. And yeah. it's like, how did you not know that? You work for this company. <laughs> you work with all these people that know how to open the doors. But then there's there's this one guy who they open a closet and they're like, here, take these guns. Okay, we're taking the guns. I'm going to show Rain how to use this gun. Okay, cool, fine. How did you know this? Oh, yeah, I play video games. Here, you open this up and put the... And then it's got, like, this auto-aim thing here. Everything's cool. It's all cool. And and that's the extent of that character's character development. You just find out that he knows about guns, and then he dies. Oh, okay. So so that's all that character had. The pregnant girl is just there to be pregnant and have an alien pop out of her at the end of the movie. She screams and runs, does nothing else for the rest of the movie. Zero character there. The woman that are there, pilot, uh, are the there pilots any interesting the conversations? Are there any? I there's like a little bit of interesting conversation at the beginning, but it's largely like you remember remember an alien when Ripley goes down to talk to talk to the two engineer guys. What what are, what are their names? I forget. But yeah, like, yeah. Like um, she goes down and she's talking to him, Parker and they're giving her a hard time, and they run the gas while she's trying to talk, so she can't, so they can't hear her, and you know they're they're like you know yelling what at her and stuff, and and then she you know insults them and walks off. Are there any scenes like this where the characters are interacting with each other in such a way that you get a feel for how they feel about each other? Maybe at the very beginning, like half of a conversation that Andy and Rain have, and it's not no, but, really that. No, but Andy and Rain are the two main characters. They yeah, don't. So no, they, we, they really. don't count. <laughs> There's no real conversations that matter okay. in the whole thing. There, right. there, there's a conversation between the pregnant girl and the pilot, who's like, "Oh yeah, he doesn't like androids because he uh, his parents were that's, killed by an that's android." That's not a conversation. That's that's, that's yeah. exposition. Yeah, that, that that's all that was. So there's really nothing to any of the other characters. Except Rain and Andy. That's really a shame. And it's you don't even find like, out that the one guy knows anything about military stuff until they find until they're like, "Oh, we're going to need these guns," and so he explains it to her so he can then die and not be needed anymore. Because the I, only other hint that you get about anything like that in the rest of the movie is like, "Oh, there was a guy playing video games." But now that I'm thinking about it, I think the guy that was playing a video game at the beginning of the movie wasn't that same guy. Oh. So actually, no. Now I'm confused. <laughs> that's that's a little strange. Okay, fine. Yeah. So, shoot. I don't even. The other guy was. Uh, how did that guy die? I think. I think he was the guy. No, no. The guy that hated androids. He died because he was trying to kill the alien while it was still wrapped in a cocoon. Oh. And he he was trying to shock it to death, and then it kind of just impaled him with its tail and crawled out of its cocoon. And, okay. Uh, before that, he dripped a bunch of acid on him, and it it just killed him dead. So so then that kind of left the pregnant girl to run away and get stuck in front of a door, which she had to she had to have the door explained to her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. There, there's nothing to any of the other characters. The pilot didn't really have anything to her that anyone mentioned. It's just like, oh, I can fly things, which is good because we need to be able to fly this up here. Yeah, if you're going to be in a spaceship, you probably want a pilot. Yeah, so so Rain and Andy were literally the only characters that mattered, and that really hurt the movie a lot. Because even with all of its flaws and all of its like scientific problems, and you know a couple of the issues that we have with the way Wayland Utani is uh, dis- is shown in this movie, yeah, all of that is pretty forgivable forgivable in this movie. Like overall, sure. it's, the movie works pretty well. I didn't like a lot of the things they did. You, you know they. They did a lot of foreshadowing that started to become more and more obvious as the movie went on. Like, <laughs> I hate that. Like, at one point, you know, they get the guns, and the android is the one that gives them the guns. And then he's like, but yeah. you can't actually shoot the aliens with that. This is like uh, this is like a last-ditch effort if we need to, because we're on the bottom of the ship and the gravity is on. So if right. you shoot them, the acid will eat through the hull and we'll all be dead anyway. So it's like, okay, well, why did you yeah. give me these guns? And, and his his reasoning was, I'm hoping that they might consider these a threat. Yeah. And it's like, but they've never seen guns before. I mean, I know the aliens are smart. I'm, I've seen enough alien movies to know that they don't consider guns to be a threat. 
Yeah, I mean, if <laughs> if the extra scene in Aliens with the uh, the turrets that yeah take out the aliens wasn't a dead giveaway, then I don't know what is. But as soon as he said that, it's like, oh, wait a minute, can't they just turn the gravity off then? And, and that ended up they being could, yes. what they did. They uh-huh. turn the gravity off, shoot all the aliens, and then the acid blood is just floating in the air, which I feel is still not a good idea. And so they had Quite to dangerous. weave their way through it in yeah. an, in zero gravity to escape. And oh, okay. I mean, it, I mean, that's it kind of a, that's kind of a cool idea for a scene, at least. Uh, I mean, yeah, like... I, it did work. So it's okay. Okay, it, as a scene, it I don't have really any issue with so, that. So, just... so, 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 what what happens is that is that you have. To, to, to break this down to its component parts, you have something that you can do to make a previously thought danger be less of a danger, but you basically also create a, a, an obstacle for yourself by by shooting the aliens, which is kind of a cool idea, right? Like, yeah, yeah, because and- it's a trade off, and and trade offs are, are, you know, the 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 times where thing where actions are not interesting is when they have no trade offs, right? It's like, well, yes, of course you push the button to save the world. There was nothing else for you to do. Right, but in this case, they're like, okay, well, we have to shoot this alien, and this might actually kill us just because it's going to block us off from being able to get to the place that we need to go. And so now, what we need is we need skill in order to get through this area, you know, skill or or some kind of other contrivance to get through this area safely, uh, so that we can achieve our our final objective and survive. And so that that's that's cool because it's it's a, it creates it creates stakes that aren't like the end of the world or not the end of the world. They're like, okay, there's this thing, and we don't know how bad it's going to be, but it's probably better than the situation we're in right now. Yes. And it's also... it. It's also... There's, there's another factor. So they know that the gravity is kind of, like, shaky when it's turned off. Like, it keeps turning itself yeah. back on, so they know that there's a... That, there's, like, some kind of gravity purge system. I don't remember what they called it. But okay. it would keep turning on, so they knew they had to get out of there quickly before it turned on again. And they had oh, to take okay. an elevator shaft uh, back to their ship. But since the gravity yeah. was off, they could just float up. Yeah. A couple of things go wrong. They end up falling. Well, Rain ends up falling up instead of floating up, so she can't get a grip on anything. And okay. the gravity turns back on, so the acid eats through the hole on the bottom of the ship. And the elevator is above them rather than below. Okay. The, she manages to get a grip on the ladder just in time for the elevator to fall past her. And it ma- this elevator, which is a big block of steel, yeah, does somehow manage to block off the entrance where the hull is breached. So that stops the hull breach. Okay. I, I, that seems I think, a little contrived, but not yeah, too bad. I, I, I was thinking that because there's clearly an airway around her on the ladder. Yeah. But you know what? Again, this is this is not a hard one to give a pass. Well, no, to. but when it hits when it, when it hits the, the the ground, it deforms and maybe it yeah blocks up a crack in the wall or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, so 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 I can give a or pass to that one. At least it really slows it down enough that it's not like a catastrophic issue, you know? Yeah. See, see, that's the thing though. This movie, this movie had a lot of things where it's like, yeah, I can give this a pass. I can give this a pass. I can give this a pass. So, yeah. So I don't want to tell everyone to give the movie a pass. Right. Right. I I would actually say that. If you really like Alien and you just want a little bit extra, the movie doesn't give you anything new, but it it is a new it is a new Alien movie. Like there's nothing yeah. in it that's like it, it's not, it sounds like there's nothing catastrophically bad in it. It just sounds like it has really thin characters. Yeah, that's that's basically it. Like if the characters had been a little better and there had been more interaction, like, like just a I few, feel just like a couple just a couple of conversations between them to to get a feel for who likes whom and who dislikes whom. You know, yeah, because that's all you really get in Alien, right? You get you know, you get the the engineer guys, you know, giving Ripley a hard time. You have Ash disobeying an order from Ripley in favor of an order from Dallas. You have uh, what's her name, you know, freaking out when uh, when Kane, you know, finally dies. You, you know, there's not a whole lot that you need to 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 give the characters a, a feel of thickness. You know, it, it's really efficiently done in Alien, and uh, it's very strange that. Uh, really, Scott couldn't couldn't repeat that in some reasonable way for this movie, but you know maybe he didn't have a choice. Well, I mean, maybe he was still recovering from whatever happened in Alien Covenant because I yeah. I feel like he took a blow to the head somewhere. <laughs> 
Yeah, Alien Covenant is, I mean, that's, what happened with that quote-unquote movie is unforgivable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Easily one of the worst movies I have ever seen in my entire life. We have a whole, we have a whole half-blind review of it, and uh, it's beautiful, and I'll put a link to it in the description. Yeah, whereas this movie, I wouldn't actually say, yeah, you, I mean, I would say you don't need to see it, but I wouldn't tell someone, oh no, it's so bad you don't want to see it. Yeah, it's not, it's not laughably bad, it's not so bad that you don't want to see it, it's like, yeah, you could, you could, you could see it if you want. But there is one laughably bad part about it. Okay. The alien that pops out of the girl's chest was the result of, so, so they brought back the goo from Prometheus. Okay. And they're, the science android on the station is telling them that they they were trying to improve humanity like like we were speed up evolution so that humanity could survive space travel better when you say goo you mean the goo that the that the engineer dude had at the beginning of prometheus that like turned him into goo yeah and and the stuff that okay. that the uh the what's his name and david or whatever found david and, yeah yeah he was trying to develop things with it Okay. So, so yeah, they they had developed their own version of the goo on this station that was supposed to improve humanity, but they they kind of showed this thing with a rat that was able to restructure itself so that it it, it was able to survive being flattened. Okay. But then when they actually get the material that so this is the prime directive that has Andy all split in different directions. The prime sure. directive is to get this stuff and get it back to Wayland Yutani. Okay. So they find this stuff, and in the same room, they find a rat who clearly has a weird alien pop it, that like popped out of it, but then died. So it's just sitting there, a deformed corpse. So we know this stuff doesn't actually do what they want it to do. Yeah. And this, I mean, the characters don't know that. We know it as viewers. Yeah, right. But this science officer is telling them to inject the pregnant girl who, uh, what? What had happened to her? Something happened to her. I, it doesn't matter because it wasn't that important. Yeah. But th they tell her, they, they, he's like, inject her with this stuff. And they're like, no, we're not going to do that. Now the stupid okay. girl ends up injecting herself later on because she oh, she's feeling sick. So, yeah. you know, brilliant. And... So, we, so we I, just need, I just need to hold off for a second. I just need to hold for a second. Because I remember the whole, like, the... In... in uh, in Alien Promet in Prometheus, the one with the rolling thing, right? Yeah, there's that. There's a whole thing where the where that woman gets 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 like super quickly pregnant with that squid thing. Yeah, and then there was that. Then there was that goofy looking weird alien like like primitive looking alien thing. Mm hmm. Do you know Do you know what happened to that primitive looking alien thing from from Prometheus? Uh, I I I, I either don't know or forgot. Okay, because they don't tell you in the movie. It's in like a comic or something. But apparently, canonically, that that create that that primitive looking alien turned into a mountain. Uh, huh? Yeah, that's that's all. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's like a comic. Do. Yeah, apparently, it turns into a mountain. The xenomorph becomes a geomorph. Yeah, a, a geo a geostationary. So anyway, just this funny... girl injects herself with this stuff. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> it's just a funny little thing that I read the other day that I was like, wait, what? And yeah, it's... If you look up the actual alien Prometheus, like, wiki, there's there, there's a discussion on it. It's really stupidly hilarious. Something about that makes me very angry while also making me want to laugh. Yeah, it's, it's, kind of, it's, very, it's, it's very mixed feelings, yeah. Anyway, go on. <laughs> so... So we as the viewer know that the black goo is not going to be good for this person. It's not going to right. save her from whatever she's suffering from. Right. The We assume that the science guy knows this too. Sure. This is a big problem I have with the movie because he needs this stuff to get back to Wayland yutani But he's going to put them in a situation where they'll be trapped on this escape shuttle with a girl that's going to have an alien pop out of her chest and kill them all, and therefore the stuff yeah. won't get back to Wayland yutani I do not understand the logic in this at all. Well, okay, so my assumption, and, and tell me if there's anything in the movie that, that, that counteracts this, is that they get the ship going in the right direction, they all die, the alien goes into, you know, hibernation or suspended animation, and Wayland yutani discovers the ship flying through their, their monitored space later. 
Okay, just, actually, just, 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 just as Rip, just as Ripley got discovered fifty-seven years later by a mining group owned by you know hired by Wayland Yutani that was monitoring a specific area of space. It seems like that might we might be able to let it pass because this whole plan of this science officer whose name was Rook, by the way. So we'll I'll, I'll quit calling him science officer. So so Rook's plan. Yeah. is he's telling them that as long as they get this material, he will help them get back to the ship and he'll autopilot them home. And, and so he's banking on having control of the ship so he'd be able yeah. to bring it wherever he wants, basically. So I right, guess that right. does work. It, I mean, it's, it, it fortunately, seems to be like fortunately was... so far, the Alien movies seem to be pretty good about having the ships maintain momentum through space. Yeah. Like when you when you see the, the, the Nostromo... The shot on the Stromo, the, 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 it's not firing its engines. It's just going, right? When you see the, the Sulaco in Aliens, the engines aren't running. It's just going because it has momentum in space and it's just going to continue well, well, moving. that's not that. even that big of a deal. I mean, he, yeah. they're, they're just above the colony. They're just in the rings above the colony. So, Well, but they're, they're, they're going to take it somewhere where like a Wayland yutani scientist will find it, is my assumption. No, no, no. They, they, the plan was to get it back to the colony. Oh. Okay. That, 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 that breaks that down, I guess. Yeah. So so it seems like speed is of the essence, so I don't know why he would risk sabotaging anything on the ship. I mean, he yeah. knows that if if an alien pops out, there's a there's a risk that the specimen could be destroyed or you know, something could happen that could cause the acid from the alien's blood to leak through the ship and have it careen off into space. Yeah, sure. So I I don't really understand why he wanted to try and infect her. But mm-hmm. that does happen, and she does end up... Well, you said she does it to herself. Yeah, yeah, she she does it to herself, and the she ends up having an alien baby. And okay. it's, it's not even like the primitive alien from Prometheus. It is this weird-looking, like, half-alien, half-human creature. It has a very human, almost, uh, almost like the Promethean's faces. Okay. Uh, with like with a tongue that has its own mouth on it, kind of like the alien's uh, inner alien mouth. Okay. And it kind of, I, I mean, I got to be honest, it looks goofy in Alien, and it kind of made me laugh. Yeah. So if they were going for creepy, it didn't quite work. But I think it would have been a great monster for like a completely different movie on its own. So whoever designed it should have like not given that one up. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like that could have been a great, like we're being stalked through the forest by a Wendigo creature. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that kind of that kind of that kind of monster design thing can be. You you can end up with a mess sometimes if you try to make too many callbacks in the design. You know. Yeah, like I so I would recommend yeah. looking up this creature just because you you'll probably understand immediately why I found it so funny to see it in the theater, especially okay. since it was it was making like, it was making weird faces at the girls, mm-hmm. even though it it. it like killed and ate one of them. Mm-hmm. It kind of it kind of gave her these looks before it did, and I was like, "Is is he like leering at her? What is going on here?" Mm. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Almost like a combination of sinister serial killer looks and also like sexual predator looks. It, it was weird. Okay, I I I, I see where I I get your point. Yeah. So, I mean, it it wasn't it wasn't that it was a a bad idea as a movie. I wouldn't watch it again. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say that I'm sad that I spent ten dollars on the ticket. Yeah, I'm definitely sad that I spent ten dollars on the hot pretzels that aren't as good as they used to be. But oh. I really wanted hot pretzels, and so I was like, "Fine." Their prices went up by by like five dollars. Whatever. Jeez. It's been six years since I've been in this theater. They have good hot pretzels. I'm not going to go to too many movies. Give me the pretzels. And they have different pretzels now, and they're disgusting. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. So, overall, not a bad experience. Not a great experience. Watch it if you want a little bit more from Alien. I mean, mediocre is better than what we got with Prometheus and Covenant. Yeah. Oh, well, okay, so I want to I wanna say that Prometheus I might have liked a little better, just because... Th- there well, Prometheus was... was better than Covenant, for sure. Oh, but Prometheus, Prometheus still was had way of, better than Covenant. <laughs> but Prometheus just had a lot of problems as well, and and, and like I I don't think I, I mean like, 
the presence of better character development and setting in Prometheus really helped push it. Well, above. Prometheus had some really bad characters, like that biologist guy and stuff. But like, yeah, but it, it did have better character development for the characters yes. that yes, you know, that's were there. I mean, Alien right. Covenant, Alien Covenant was just a mess from from the start. You know, it's yeah. You blew up the ship. Total, total Why did mess. you blow up the ship? Why are you opening fire in this ship? What is wrong with you? I don't even. Uh, I I have nothing good to say about Alien Covenant. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I would say I liked Prometheus just a little bit better than this movie. If for nothing else, I just, I really felt like it was, imma- it was a very immature alien because of the, the teenagers or whatever they were in it. It was just like, these are not fleshed out human beings, even in real life. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, it looks like we made an episode out of this, despite the fact that I thought we were not going to be able to. So, yeah. Yeah. I guess we can call it. I think we can. Uh. Alien Romulus. A lot of look. If if anyone who happens to work in Hollywood writing a, at all sees this, the takeaway is that these characters are just too dang thin, and they need to have a little bit of time to talk to each other. And it doesn't even have to be much. Just go watch Alien a couple of times and say, "Why? You know, why? Why do I feel compelled by these characters?" And do something like that in your freaking movie, and you'll do it again. It's not hard. You know the, the 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 this this um this this trend these days where everything where you kind of could maybe guess what would happen in a character interaction we just cut away from the character interaction like you know don't do that let the characters breathe with each other a little bit and and you can make a movie that actually might be good yeah here's here's hoping I mean I right? I have to care about the characters a little bit. Like, like I'm rooting for Ripley an Alien. I would yeah. not have cared if the aliens were victorious in this I'm, movie. I'm rooting for I'm rooting for I'm rooting for multiple characters in Alien. I'm rooting for even more characters in Aliens. Y- you know, like you 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 want Ripley and uh, and the two because c- like at the end at the end of Alien, there's three yeah. of them left. Yeah, and, and you want and them like, all to man, survive. If they if they could all get out of there, that'd be great, and it'd be it'd be satisfying and it'd work, and like. You know, you have the, the the two characters at the very end, and and like he's trying to protect, you know, what's her face, whose name I can never remember, and and you know, you you do you don't even remember the characters' names, but you still feel attached to the characters, you know? Yeah. So, so that's it's doable. Uh, it can be done, and people have done it, and so and so can you. It can be done, and so can something. I don't know. Yeah. Make make better movies. Anyway, that's yeah. All. Make just just write better characters. Give them a little time to talk to each other. Give them a scene or two. You don't Quite need that much. Stuff. Well, like that's not helpful, but like but like letting characters talk to each other a little bit here and there is helpful because yeah, no, people no, don't no, no. do it, it these days and I don't know why. I I'm sorry, but these days it is helpful. There's just too much crap out there and there's always been crap. There has always been a plethora of crap. To this day, you can you can go back into the old movie libraries and find you know, horrible movies from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Sure. Especially the 70s. And yes. there's there's just no end to it. But there were people out there that were trying to make good movies, and those movies always managed to float to the top. Mm-hmm. It, generally, there would be someone in Hollywood that, that knew that, oh, this one is actually good. This is the one that we need to really market to people. Right. And And that seems to be gone now, so... I, I don't know. All you, all you independent writers out there, uh, I guess I, I guess it's up to you. <laughs> yeah, basically. All right, I guess we'll call that an episode. Yeah. So yeah, Alien Romulus mixed mixed review, half blind. Some good parts, some bad parts. Thin characters. Any final word? Yeah, just there. There. There's not really any objection that I would have if someone was like, "Ooh, I want to go see that." So, like, if my yeah, friends okay. wanted to go see it and I already had seen it, I'd be like, yeah, sure, let's go. Uh, okay. It is not a Fair movie enough. that I would add to my collection. Right. Fair enough. All right. This has been the Wordy Pair Podcast. Thanks for watching or thanks for listening, everybody. Or uh, whatever whatever it is that you do with podcasts. You know, you might be on YouTube or whatever. but You uh, read yeah, them. Thanks you for... read podcasts. You read podcasts. That, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, so what you're saying is that you're going to start doing transcripts. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> uh, yes, each and every one. I will devote myself to it hourly. And, I mean, and YouTube I... might do YouTube might do automatic captions. That's the best you're gonna get. Well, I, I'm just gonna copy theirs. 
Oh, okay, that works. And then I'll tell no one, and I'll burn the papers. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody, and uh, we will see you next week. As always, I'm Rudy. And I'm Justin, slightly more confused. And we are out. See you later. Toodles. Thanks for listening to the Wordy Pair Podcast. Our passion is all things writing, world building, and getting into the weird and wonderful world of fiction. We hope you enjoyed our unique takes. If you did, make sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to get your weekly dose of writing weirdness. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit us up on Twitter. For Rudy, it's at Rudolph underscore Cone. And for Justin, at Ninja Mouse Chew. See you next time on the Wordy Pear Podcast.